I want to first off thank everybody for their love and support for viewing and sharing my fighting blindness video. Um, I thank you so much for all of your pledges. Um, it's just been a beautiful day of Thanksgiving and just um, really joy for what's to come. Um, I also wanted to share with you, I have sent out a lot of messages um, asking for you all's help in posting flyers in your community. Um, I want to go over that really quickly. Um, so what I want to tell you is in the description box of these videos, there will be the links that I discuss. And um, we have a YouTube channel um, that you're watching now. Please subscribe to this channel. I will update videos every week. Um, telling you what's going on. Um, I myself will be posting pictures of me putting up flyers in my immediate community. Um, Instagram is uh, instagram.com slash fighting underscore blindness. Um, so please follow me um, there. You see what's going on. Um, also, we have a Twitter page which is twitter.com forward slash fight blindness to the number two so twitter.com slash fight blindness the number two um, we're on facebook um, you can go to facebook.com slash three and take you directly to my page um so with the flyer um what I tried to do on Instagram was take a picture of the flyer so that you could screenshot it. And when you screenshot the flyer, then you could, if you have a mobile device that you're using like your tablet or a Google Chromebook or your phone even, and it's attached to a wireless printer, then you could print out the flyer yourself um, if you're using Instagram. Otherwise, if you go to my direct URL on GoFundMe, um, which is gofundme.com forward slash HR like human resources 56AW Apple Water. So the, again, that's gofundme.com forward slash HR 56AW. If you go there, you can print the flyer yourself. Um, it's really easy. So you just go straight to that link. You can watch my videos there as well. Um, I try to post pictures there. Um, but I just want to show you when you print the flyer out, it's going to look like this. Um, you're going to see my picture. You're going to see um, the link that I just told you, the www.gofundme.com slash hr56aw. It'll be there. All the information they need, need is on the flyer. So it prints out like that. And then what I end up doing is um, cutting the bottom portion with the links um, into strips, little strips. So when I post it on the tree or the post or on the clipboard, some people have um, break rooms where you can post things on their clipboard. Some people have tables at their church where you can put flyers and information down for people to pick, pick up just frequent high traffic areas, you may have a place at your job, it's the holiday time, you're looking for a fundraiser, you work for a nonprofit. Um, so you just make it really easy for people you post it, then they can just snatch one of these off and go, they got the information. They can even take a picture with their phone and go from there. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today was the cost and why I'm raising $50,000. Um, I need to do a total of 35 treatments um, in order to grow a new artery, a new optical nerve to give me the vision that I've lost to. So each treatment is $200. That's $7,000. In order to um, stay in Los Angeles, in a hotel for about 56 days because the treatments are offered Monday through Friday is about $9,000. And this is to stay in an affordable hotel that offers a fitness center, 
um, a swimming pool offers breakfast, complimentary breakfast, and um, it's close enough to the center that I can get back and forth there for a reasonable cost um, for five days a week, as well as has like a Trader Joe's and a Fresh and Easy right across the street so that I can get the raw foods because I have to have a 75% raw diet. Also have to have alkaline water, um, so I have to be hydrated. I have to take a certain amount of herbs, medications. All of this is a complete process to create the, um, the bodies, to prepare the body to receive the healing that's taking place. So it's kind of like if you can imagine um, your body has vitamins, minerals, uh, pH, it has level, it has water intake, water is tremendously important um, to our body function, right? And in the type of water that you're consuming. So your body has to have a basic set of minerals, vitamins, water to survive right the body's going to survive now you need your body to be beyond survival in order to heal and repair itself right so i have to get my body alkaline and clean which is what i'm going through now the preparation steps of cleansing and of uh, eliminating different things chemical and processed foods things that destroy the body i'm eliminating those things from my life so that my body can be beyond survival level. It can all my levels, my body can be clean, my vitamins can be at 100%, my minerals can be at 100%, and I can be hydrated. So my body can receive the nutrients and circulated blood, enriched blood, and go straight to the organs and straight to the different parts of the body that need healing. And for me, this would be my eyes. So anyhow, I just wanted to kind of give you all a base breakdown on what my life will be like um, for seven weeks. I am believing God and praying to start my, my actual first session starts June 1st and the last day of the seven week session will be July 17th of 2015. Um, that is my goal um, and I am just really thankful for all the support um, and love that has been pushed and given and and received by all of you all. Um, I never would have imagined that I would be right here in my life sharing this testimony and um, really just having this experience and definitely not for this long. I can imagine as a little girl, I remember being in fourth grade, I was about eight years old, and my mother was in college. And um, at the time she was at Grambling State University, shout out to GSU. And she took us to a football game. Now we're native Californians, and we're, now we're in the South. And we went to this football game, it was really exciting. There's lots of people there, and it's halftime. And I'm thinking, oh wow, we're gonna go get some stuff in the concession. And my mom says, no, wait, we're, we're not gonna, we're not going anywhere. This is what people come to the game for. And so, um, the next thing I know, I hear this music, and then there's this band, and they come out, and they got their legs high in the air, and their backs you know, and they're straight and they're carrying these instruments and they're moving their bodies from left to right. And I'm like, wow, what is this, you know? And by the end of their performance, I was like, I am going to Grambling State University. When I grow up, this is my school and I'm going to be in the band. So, I don't know, within a few months of that, we had a project in school where we were to decide what college we wanted to go to and we were to write them a letter. We were learning how to write letters. And we were to write them a letter 
and ask them for information about the school and how to apply. So I wrote my letter to Grambling State University and I got my application and my brochure and I held on to that same application until um, the end of my 11th grade year and I sent off my application and everything that was required because I had my mind made up that's what I was going to do. As a pre-med student, I was going to be a doctor, a pediatrician, and that's all that I knew. I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't think about what if, that, you know, all I thought about is what I will do and what I need to do to do it and go do it. That's all I focused on. And they could have never told me that a year later, I would be in a car accident where if I had not had my seatbelt on, I would have gone through the windshield, but I hit my head so hard on the windshield that I blacked out, and all I could remember is me mashing on the brakes, and as I'm about to get out of the car, there's the ambulance, and I just remember thinking, wow, I have this burning feeling on my hip, and the, and the, um, the MSA guys are like, are you okay? Did you want to go to the hospital? Let's take you to the hospital. I'm like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I wore glasses at the time. My glasses were twisted up in the back seat. And they escorted me off the highway. And um, anyway, you know, my mom, my parents, they took me to the hospital. And the physician, he said, follow my finger, left to right up and down and okay you're gonna be in a little pain tomorrow here's some extra some Tylenol and that was it and weeks went on I had black eyes and then green and blue purple I mean it was just all this swelling all in here all in here and over time as the semester ended for my senior year I noticed little subtle differences I was in the band I tried to read my music and the notes would jump around on the page and it would, I would really have to focus and I, I would just see this little, I'm like, I don't know what is going on, but I just kept saying, it'll get better and this will go away. And not knowing that I was losing my sight, not even wanting to believe that that was happening to me, not wanting to entertain it, even though things were getting more and more challenging, the more things that I tried to do, more and more activities like read a phone number off the phone book, read a book even, filling out applications, just everyday normal things that you have to do when you're getting ready for your freshman year of college, more and more difficult. I remember me and my best friend um, walking around campus before classes started so we can know where our classes were. So the first day I remember just going early to our math class and I asked her, would you go up there and write some stuff on the board and let me see if I can see it? And I remember her writing things and it was so difficult for me to see what was written. And I just kept thinking, no, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. It's going to get better. I just have a lot of stress on me. This is a new environment. I just kept telling myself anything and everything because I could not imagine that this was happening, that this this was my life and this was, this was really happening to me. I didn't know how to accept that. I'm thankful that I'm on the other side of the coin now because I have hope. Now I have hope. I have the realization that there is treatment, that there is healing, that there is more of my life than a car accident 17 and a half years ago. Five and seconds. that in addition to that, I can help.